When the average person thinks of a tank, speed probably isn't the first thing to pop into their mind. Tanks are known for being big and bulky, these giant machines that can take a hit and keep fighting. For light tanks, however, speed is their primary mode of survival. As the great survivability onion says, surviving a hit is all well and good, but never getting hit in the first place, that's even better. That being said, there's one question that's been on my mind for a while now. What was the absolute fastest light tank ever made? Of course, you've got well-known examples such as the BT-7 and M18 Hellcat, but I wanted to find a tracked and armed vehicle at the absolute highest top speed, regardless of if it was a prototype or not. To do this, we'll have to revisit the Armored Combat Vehicle Technology program. Yes, that program. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I promise you guys, this isn't yet another HSTVL video, but it will be mentioned a few times. Before we get into the video properly, I do want to talk about my sponsor. As you guys are probably aware by this point, I'm sponsored by Apex Gaming. They're a company that makes pre-built PCs. So if you're looking to upgrade your rig but don't want to build it yourself, maybe check them out. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. The ACVT program was a joint venture between the US Army and Marine Corps, and as the name implies, it was meant to test a few novel concepts and technologies, which if proven successful, could be used for future combat vehicles. One of the main concepts was using speed as armor. With the proliferation of new anti-tank weaponry, successfully armoring a tank was becoming much more difficult. It was hoped that by using speed, the vehicle could avoid getting hit in the first place, increasing its chances of survival. A few vehicles had already been designed with this in mind, namely the MBT-70 and M1 Abrams, but the US wanted to see how far they could push the concept. Two testbeds were created to test their theory. One would be a variable parameter testbed, meaning that if necessary, the vehicle's characteristics could be changed easily, and controlled for in each experiment. The other would be more rigid, a representation of what a combat-ready vehicle might look like. You probably already know what the latter is. We'll be focusing on the former. Ordered in 1975, it was called the High Mobility and Agility Test Rig, or HIMAG. Though it was roughly the size of a main battle tank, it was significantly lighter, with its weight varying from 30 to 40 metric tons. To achieve its maximum weight configuration, it used lead ballast. It was powered by the AVCR 1360, the same engine used by the General Motors XM1 prototype. The 1360 was a variable compression diesel, and on the high mag could produce 1,000, 1,250, or 1,500 horsepower. This meant that the high mag's power to weight ratio could vary from 25 to 50. The AVCR was coupled to the X1100 transmission, which was used by both X and one prototypes. The suspension was a hydro-pneumatic type. It was made by Teledyne Continental Motors, and was heavily based on some of their previous systems, such as the one used on the T95 testbed, with factors such as height, attitude, dampening, stiffness, and wheel travel being controllable. At first, the HiMag didn't have a turret installed. In its place, a rollover structure was provided for the test commander. When it did eventually receive a turret, it used a cleft design, similar to the low-profile turret used by the Stryker MGS. It mounted the Ares MCAAC, a 75mm autocannon. It was mounted between the gunner and commander, with both crew members being low down in the hull. The 75 was supposed to use liquid propellant, but that kept making the gun explode, which was not ideal, so the arm used conventional propellant. The gun also had a sliding breech originally, which allowed it to fire at a staggering 120 RPM, but not only was it unreliable, the accuracy was also subpar. It eventually swapped to a rotating breech mechanism, which was much better, although the fire rate was now just 60 RPM. Since the HIMAG was not designed to do a ton of live fire testing, it only carried 6 rounds of ammo. Unlike the HSTVL, the HIMAG's carousel moved with the gun. The HIMAG used an advanced fire control system made by Delco, which included features such as thermal auto track, independent sight stabilization, projectile tracking, automatic adjustment, and automatic bore sighting. The gun could depress 20 degrees and elevate 40. Strangely enough, it used a turbine APU, which was attached to the rear of the turret. Usually, you would use a turbine as the main engine, and the diesel as the APU, not vice versa. It also had an air conditioning system, which for vehicles made at that time, was pretty atypical. Each turret crew member had a video monitor, which displayed the view from the site. The HIMAG carried over 500 pounds of testing equipment, with some of it being used to provide the test observers with video feeds. So just how fast was the HIMAG? I can't find any specific numbers, but some sources say it could go over 60 miles per hour, or over 96 kilometers per hour. It could go from 0 to 30 miles per hour in just 7.8 seconds. For comparison, that was a 0 to 20 speed for the M1 Abrams. The results of the mobility trials were pretty interesting. It was found that while HIMAX power to weight ratio played a large part in its mobility, as you would expect, other relatively benign characteristics also played large parts. For example, if your vehicle has high power to weight but a bad suspension system, it can only utilize speed on smooth surfaces. To have a high-performance vehicle that can do well anywhere, an ideal balance of power to weight, ground pressure, center of gravity, and dampening has to be maintained. 
it was also found that while HiMax performance could exceed the M1, the benefits were pretty much negligible. By making rapid twists and turns, it could throw off enemy gunners, improving its survivability. But while undertaking these maneuvers, its ability to fight back was severely diminished, even with the advanced fire control system. So if you're just trying to avoid getting hit, the extra mobility is great. But if you're trying to return fire, then not so much. The army was also quite pleased to discover that when experienced drivers were given the extra mobility, they actually used it. There are worries that drivers would be too timid to really let loose, and that's understandable. If your vehicle weighs over 30 tons, and is unproven, flooring it could be a scary proposition. It probably helped that unlike most tanks, the crew inside the HIMAG actually had seatbelts. If you tried to go over 60 miles per hour in an M1, the gunner would probably end up with a concussion, and that's an optimistic outcome. HIMAG would go on to be used for other programs, including tests for the Startle radar site. Much like the MTAS site used by the M1CATTB, if the battlefield was obscured by smoke, Startle would, in theory, allow a vehicle to see through that smoke and engage targets. Up to three targets could be tracked and engaged, with the fire control system automatically switching to the next target. With Startle installed, the fire rate was reduced to 30 RPM, one shot every two seconds. As for what happened to the HIMAG testbed, that's unknown. The HSTVL is currently being restored to the US Armor and Cavalry Collection, but the HIMAG is nowhere to be seen. It's possible that once its usefulness ran out, it was subsequently scrapped. Unlike the HSTVL, the HIMAG was built by the Army, not a contractor, so they could do with it as they pleased. But before we close out the video, I do want to make one honorable mention. While the HIMAG was the fastest tracked vehicle that was armed, there is one vehicle that set a much higher record. The M113 Hot Rod was also created for the ACVT program, and as you can probably guess by the name, it was an M113 that was tuned to a stupid degree. It had not one, but two Chrysler V8 engines, each producing 400 horsepower. You're probably wondering where they fit the second engine. It was placed in what used to be the troop compartment, with a massive air intake protruding at the top. It was also fitted with a roll bar. During tests, it achieved a speed record of 77 miles per hour on road. That's 123 kilometers per hour. In off-road conditions, it got up to around 50 miles per hour. That's 80 kilometers per hour. In just 2.9 seconds, it could go from 0 to 20 miles per hour. For the regular M113, it took 33 seconds to do the same. There's something comedic about an M113, one of the least sleek vehicles to ever exist, holding the speed record for tracked vehicles. Unfortunately, there's no footage of HIMAG or Hot Rod in action. I'm sure that would have been great to see. Anyway, I hope this video was somewhat informative. I know some people will say that some wheeled vehicles are faster, but that's not really the point. Maybe I could make a video on the fastest wheeled AFV at some point, who knows. To the best of my knowledge, the HIMAG was the fastest tracked light vehicle with a gun, and the M113 Hot Rod was the fastest tracked vehicle overall. I thought maybe the VT-12 could be a contender, or the RV-2, but apparently they had relatively low top speeds. If you guys have suggestions for video topics, let me know in the comments. I'll see you on the next one.